Today you are going to want to stick around because you are gonna learn everything to get started with film cameras. Hello and welcome, my name is Giuliano Gadli, welcome to a new Tutorial Monday. It's so great to see all your smiling faces back in today. It's Monday, I hope you are having a great day and today just to, you know, make your day maybe a little better, I've decided to teach you how to operate and uh, shoot on film. For some of you that uh, live nowadays, you know, you might be listening to this and saying like, what does it even mean? Like, you know, film photography, like, nowadays you have phones that have sensors in them that can make brilliant, like amazing photos. You have uh, mirrorless cameras, DSLRs, you have everything to to take photos cheaply, like economically you don't have to pay pretty much for uh, memory all over again because you ran out of it and you cannot delete stuff and you know. So what is even like analog? Why would you want to consider it? So this is an analog camera and it's made by Praktika, which is a German brand. It's a, you know, nowadays new cameras like these are not being made. So these are, for example, from the 70s of the last century. So they are kind of old pieces of art, if you, if you will. So, and they are just mechanical boxes for the most part. There are, of course, cameras that, uh, you know, have, uh, electronics in them, they can measure exposure and uh, aperture for you, so those exist, but this one right here is purely mechanical, there is no electronics in here. So when then, if this is pretty much just the provider for your photo, what do you actually shoot on? There is no sensor, there is just a blank hole, as I will show you later, because Right now this camera is loaded and I will show you how to unload a camera like this and load it. So this is the film we are going to be loading. It is a black and white film, Fomapan, it's a Czech brand. They make uh, very, very nice films for the price. They are not expensive and uh, you know, to get started they are the best thing you can buy. So. This has two sides and on one side, which is this one, the, the reflective one, it has uh, an emulsion on it and this emulsion will uh, react to light. So if you expose it to light, it will darken, it will, and you know, according to the brightness of the light you're exposing it to, it will create, you know, an, uh, an image, but that's just this it's not developed it's just uh, it's just on the film so this is pretty much your sensor you will be shooting on on this so now that you know what we are dealing with you might have another question and that is like why would you even consider buying this camera buying film you know, why would you even do that? And also, like, this roll of film has about 36 exposures on it. So, you know, you're paying money for only 36 photos and then you're done. You cannot shoot anymore because the film is full. So, why would you even consider it? You know, the reason that a lot of people nowadays shoot on film is that, number one, it is most likely cheaper to buy this over a digital camera. And number two, which is in my in my opinion, this is the more the more you know the, the better reason why people shoot on these cameras, and that is that the look is just it cannot be imitated anywhere else than on a roll of film. This is a black and, black and white roll. There are even color rolls, so the, the color ones are more popular, but uh, 
the black and whites are cheaper. You can also develop them by yourself, so it doesn't have to be another payment to a brand or to a, to a company that will develop it for you. I also find, especially myself, I don't know if some of you might have the same, uh, you know, tendings to do this, but when I'm shooting with a digital camera, you know, photos, you will shoot a lot of, a lot of, a lot of them, like tons of photos that you almost don't even think about when you when you are shooting them. So think about it. In your camera you have probably an SD card that has 64 GB of space. Now, if you take one JPEG photo, if you don't shoot RAW, in one GB there are 1000 photos, if all of them have one megabyte. So that means that with such a memory card you can shoot up to 64,000 photos, even more. If you're shooting RAW, it depends on the camera, but usually will have a lot less because the just it's just the data of that photo is way, way bigger than a JPEG. So to get back to the point, if you shoot a lot of photos, you then like start to lose the feeling of the special photo because not all photos are the same. And mainly if you don't even think about the photo when you're shooting it a little bit like from you know outside the box you're just like i will shoot it it might be good it might not who cares i can shoot more i can delete them i can do whatever i want but if you if you get an analog camera and you decide to try to shoot with this then you will find out that you have one roll one roll only and you have 36 frames to fill you cannot just, you know, run around, shoot everything and uh, be like, yeah, it's, who cares? Like, I can delete it and replace it. You cannot, because this is, this is physical material. And if you, if you messed up a photo, well, that's, that's your problem, because no one will, uh, will give you that photo back. If you messed it up, it's, it's there, it's there forever and you know, that's, uh, that's the way it is. So by shooting on film, you can learn a lot, a lot about uh, planning a photo, thinking from the beginning to the end of the shoot. You can really just dive into it and be more focused about the stuff you're doing, because you have only one take. These cameras are not expensive. Like, if you were to go there and look for something like this, even something more modern, because to buy something that is only mechanical, that doesn't have even a, a light exposure meter, it has nothing, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's a tough move for a beginner, so. But you can spend around 700 crowns for, uh, for a really good camera. This is my, my favorite lens, it's not the sharpest one, it's a 48 mil, and uh, the bokeh from this is uh, is more circular. You know, it does these circular uh, bokeh effects in your background. And this lens is not is not even more expensive than the body. Even this one goes for around 700 crowns on eBay or, s or websites like this. It's not expensive. Well, but now let's get into how to take the film out of the camera to then put in a new one. Many cameras are different, especially these, and the release systems are uh, placed maybe on a, on a different part of the camera, but what you are looking for is when you're done shooting, it doesn't allow you to go more because you have 36 frames filled, there is a button somewhere on the camera. On mine, it is right here next to the next to the winding lever so this button will release the the mechanism that holds the film in place some cameras might have it on the bottom many practicas do canon cameras do have it as well on the bottom but sometimes it's on the top you know different places for different cameras but when you find it 
you will just press it and you will hear a click, some, something releases. Then on the other side you have this, uh, this round thing. This holds the, the roll itself in place. So when, when you want to take out the roll, you will lift this lever that is on top of it. There is an arrow on, on, on the lever and you will turn you will turn it according to the to the arrow. It is stiff because you have a lot of film in it. It's pulling through the mechanism. So now if you heard this sound, that means that the the gears in the camera released the film. Now it's uh, just here freely. So you will turn it some more and now it is in the in the light sealed container for it. Open the camera and release the film. This is your exposed film, it's done. To show you even more how this how this system works. Now that the, the body is open as I'm holding down the, the shutter, now look what happens. You can see me through the camera. And that is because there is nothing. In a digital sen in the digital camera you would have a sensor here. But since this is analog, what goes here is your is your frame. That's enough of showing off the camera. Let's close it. And now let's load the new film, which is this one. Now, take a look. You need to load the, the cassette, needs to go in with the longer side on the bottom. This is important because it will keep the, it will keep the light sensitive layer where it should be. If you put it this way, it won't, it won't react to light. This is not the sensitive layer, it is this one. So you put it in, you secure it with the pin on top where you winded the film into the cassette before. You will just close it so now it doesn't fall off anything. And what I recommend doing is just turning to have, uh, to have the catching mechanism right in the middle. Now many cameras are different, Practicas have, pretty much all of Practicas have the same system. So. If you own a Practica camera, camera, this is universal. You can do it with your own camera, pretty much the same way I'm doing it here. Now you will take out a bit of the film out the out the cassette, and there is a special, you know, a special ridge here that uh, will hold your film down and block it into the mechanism, which is this turning wheels, you know. It's pretty important, keep that in mind. So, you'll take the film and put it through the metal bracket. And then you will catch the film under piece, you know, under this piece so it's caught in place. And now you're pretty much done. What you need to do now is to wind it once. So, as you can see, the mechanism catches onto the film and now you're done. You can just close the camera, you will shoot a bunch of photos so you are sure that none of the film you're shooting next is exposed and you're good to go. Now if you for example got the camera from your grandpa or uh, you didn't buy it yourself, you might get a camera similar to mine and that is that it has no electronics, as I said. And what that means is that, you know, the light exposure is not automatic. You have to calculate the time, the aperture, according to the sensitivity of your film. You cannot change sensitivity, you cannot change ISO. So what I recommend doing is, as I probably showed already in my first video, is to download an app that is called light meter free. I will leave a link down below to the Google Play Store. The most interesting part for you is the camera meter, the first button. And now if you take a look for example and you know you have a fixed ISO so 
the ISO on my film is 200. So I will just scroll down, find 200, click it, and that is locked. Now, I usually know the f-stop I want to be at, so I might put 11 because I'm shooting a landscape, and that means that I want to let it calculate the time. What you will do to let it calculate the time, you will just long press it. See? Now I've long pressed the f-stops, but you want to calculate time, so you will long press the, the seconds, you know, the, that. So now it tells me that to be able to shoot this at my lighting conditions that I wanted to, I would have to go to one third of a second. So if I take again my camera, there is a wheel on top. And here what you will do is just go in and put in the settings on the top wheel as your cameras, as your, uh, as the light meter app said. And then, since you have manual focus lenses, you will have to focus using the, the focus ring and set the aperture that you want it to. So that's on this lens especially is the top ring and the bottom ring is the focus ring. So you will set the, the details you told it you want to and you shoot the picture, you're done. You would, by the way, it sounds like this. It's a beautiful sound, eh? So, this is it. So, a quick rundown of the layout of the camera. So, the top portion, you have the wheel to extract the film from the camera. You have your, uh, your shutter speed, which is this wheel. You have your winding, which is this one. And from the back, you have your viewfinder. You have, from the front, you have the shutter. So that's what you need to know about such a camera. That's pretty much it. There is nothing more, nothing less. It's a really simple piece of hardware and uh, it's just a simple, simple camera. I will leave you a link to eBay in your, you know, some category from for uh, analog photography. Or maybe you have some of your like local camera shops that might have, might have this uh, equipment. So if so, do your research, look into it because uh, I guarantee you that you will enjoy this. The photos you will get from from this process are uh, are really nice. They uh, they have their characteristic look. You know it. It's the grain. If you if you buy a color film, you can get color shifts, and every film is different. So if you would like to see a video of me explaining you the differences between every single brand of films, like mainly the the big names, so. You, can, you know what to buy and what you can expect from it, leave a, leave a comment down below. I might do another video on this. This has been it. This has been your beginner's guide to analog photography. If you've enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And mainly, have a wonderful Monday.